Hi folks, this is Saryom for C Vena. Um, so in the next two, three or four weeks, we are going to talk about um, modern neuro rehabilitation. Uh, what do I mean by modern neuro rehabilitation? As you know, most of what is uh, what is written as techniques, uh, PNF, Roots, uh, uh, Bobatz, Braunstrom, Generis, uh, sensor integration. All these things were written in, uh, in the 60s and 70s. Um, what is the commonality between all these things is there are, uh, I think there are two commonalities. One is they all thought that if you give a stimulus you get a, a response. So they use the stimulus to get two responses. One is to reduce it or increase something. And uh, the other uh, commonality between all these things is that all these exercises were impairment level exercises. Impairment level exercises means doing flexion extension, bridging, uh, that kind of things. Now, if you see uh, Bobat or uh, Brunstrom or uh, Jane Aries, what they did was they, they will give you some stimulus, uh, uh, if, if whether it is uh, proprioception in PNF or vestibular in case of uh, Jane Aries and things like that. And they were trying to uh, modify the system by inhibition or uh, excitation. That's what we, be, we have been calling it as neuro rehab, neuro facilitation and we have covered those things in uh, previous videos. Um, but all these things uh, changed uh, especially in the 80s, uh, late 80s, um, uh, in the mid 80s I suppose um, by two very very important people in uh, neuro rehabilitation that is Carr and Shepard, uh, two Australian therapists. Uh, they wrote a book called as um, uh, motor relearning program uh, in 1984 that was the first edition I think um, and in that book uh, they were talking about something different than just uh, facilitation just facilitation um, what was their basic idea or assumption was that you need to move beyond impairment and you have to go towards uh, functional exercise or a task oriented exercise that's what they called it as that time uh, so the basic idea was that if you have to uh, you if your patient has to improve walking you have to make him walk if your patient has to improve in sit to stand uh, do sit to stand uh, if, if you have to uh, improve in um, uh, standing do standing they were less concerned with impairments. It's not that they didn't do impairments, but they were less concerned with that. They were uh, they they were slowly moving away from reducing spasticity and things like that, or facilitating things like that. They were slowly. It's not that they completely um, moved away from impairment, but they were slowly moving away from that. And what it did was it change the physiotherapy practice from facilitation towards more and more task oriented exercise functional exercise and the accumulation and the um, and the accumulation of it is that uh, you can now uh, see a Cochrane uh, review which states that if you do repetitive task oriented practice you get a substantial amount of um, effect or recovery for people with uh, stroke. This, um, this sea change in our uh, uh, understanding of neural rehabilitation uh, started with uh, Karen Shepard's idea of task oriented approach. Remember there are many many scientists who came after them, there are many many researchers who came after them who uh, started adding to it, modifying to it, doing effectiveness research and things like that. But I believe these two people were the starting pioneering uh, people in that. So in the coming uh, weeks, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to talk about uh, what do you mean by task oriented um, from uh, the beginning itself, from the 80s, what, uh, what did uh, uh, Karen Shepard think about task oriented and slowly how it evolved into uh, modern uh, what I mean by modern uh, functional uh, task oriented approach. So please stay, stay tuned to us and uh, thank you for watching.